Hi, everybody. I'm waiting to see if this is going to go live. Hopefully it is. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to tell when it comes to live streaming when you have this five or six second delay and you don't know what's going on the other side of the technology with Google Hangouts. But hi, everybody. I'm Angela. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, I don't know how many people are going to be joining tonight. Um, feel free to come by and stop by and say hi and just hang out for a couple of minutes. But this is going to be archived on my channel for later. So if people can't watch tonight, hopefully you guys can see it on a later date. But for those of you who are going to be able to join me, I'm just so appreciative. I know tonight is just a night of mysteries with the Cozy Mystery Book Club at 8 p.m. And I have my Malice Domestic Book Haul here. So I just wanted to share some of the Malice love with y'all because it's really difficult to film and then edit and then post. YouTube, the last couple of times I've uploaded videos, it has taken days to upload. And then I'm also very particular when it comes to editing. So it takes me <laughs> a very long time to edit videos. Plus, I've been traveling and all sorts of stuff has been going on, but I still wanted to share my Malice Domestic Book Haul with everybody. So tonight I'm doing this live stream just to share that Cozy Mystery love with everyone. So I'm really excited to do this. I hope people can um, stop by and, you know, chat about some Cozy Mysteries. Because I really did, I, I did a live stream Monday night talking about my Book Lovers Con book haul, but I really did make out like a bandit <laughs> at Malice Domestic. I, I got so many books. And pretty much they were all free. I have to admit, out of all the events I've gone to, this might have been the best event for free books. Keep that in mind. <laughs> Jess, hi, I love Jess, she's so sweet. She was one of those people I'm so glad I met. I'm so glad our social media paths crossed. I'm keeping her, she's so, she's best, I love her. If you guys aren't already following Jess, you should be. She's just, especially if you like romance novels. That's why we get along. <laughs> Um, again, just all the love to her. Please go follow her just on all of her social media platforms. She's just the best. I have quite a few books. In all honesty, my thought process was to go through this first pile probably a little quicker than the rest because honestly, it was so funny. Again, with this is probably the best <laughs> event for free books. You check in and you get a bag and the bag already came with books in it. Yes, and this is before the event even starts. So you just, you start the event with free books. And this is what I started the event with at check-in. I was amazed by that. Because at Book Lovers Con, I think I got two or three books at check-in. And meanwhile, you get this entire file. <laughs> so I'm just saying, this was a great event if you want to go get some free swag. Ah. <laughs> I know, I really do love Jess. She's just such a bright ray of sunshine. I love her. And then Lady Gizmo, always killing with the emojis. I love the emojis. I don't even know where you find them, but they're amazing. <laughs> Especially the little monocle. I love that. I actually don't think I've seen that one before. You need to use that one forever now, whenever it comes to any Coe's Mystery goodness. I love that, and I'm keeping that. <laughs> um, so, I should probably just dive right on into this one, because... We do have the Cozy Mystery Book Club live stream at 8 o'clock tonight, and <laughs> I don't want to be talking until 8 o'clock, because at that point, I'm going to lose my voice, but there's a lot of books here to go through. And the first batch of them probably aren't my necessary go-to mysteries. They seem a little bit darker, more mysterious in that particular way. Again, I'm a Cozy Mystery girl, and so when I saw Black Swan Rising, I was kind of going, I'm going to have to be in the mood to read this one, because I love my cozies. They're all, you know, they're comfort food. You just enjoy them. They're just, everything is off the page. And so this one kind of screams a little bit darker to me with the cover. So this is one of the free books I got right off the bat. And so I'm kind of curious if anyone's read this. I actually hadn't heard of it before I saw it in my bag. And obviously now that I have it, I have to add it to the Chubby Red list. So if you have any thoughts, please tell me. And then <laughs> I don't cook. I've been very upfront with you guys. The closest I get to baking and cooking is through books. So when I saw Death, comes to death comes in through the kitchen i was really excited i know it doesn't necessarily look like a cozy mystery but i like the title and i get to live vicariously with all my baking cooking like mysteries though so i'm excited about this one and it says a cuban mystery and i've never heard of this one before and so i was just i love the cover too i was just totally captivated by this and i was really excited to see this one it was just one of those ones where <laughs> you can't change a book by the cover but you really want to no, is Black Swan Rising supposed to be like the movie? I don't think it is. In which case, again, like this is why my mind immediately went to dark because when you see Black Swan Rising, 
Um, so it has to do with um, a political staffer and a, um, a television reporter. And so they have this hashtag that they're targeting and it has to do with like a hate group. And so it's against anyone who goes against their cause. So they have this big decision to make, how do they hide or fight back? And so again, with the whole hate group element, I'm going, okay, you know, I like my cozy mysteries. I go for the baking ones, the very lighthearted fun ones. This doesn't scream lighthearted and fun. So gotta be in a particular mood to grab this one, I think. I don't know if anyone else is a mood reader, but I definitely am, which is why the next few kind of have that same vibe. These look more like <laughs> the type of things my dad would read, more so than myself, which is why I kept them. Um, I'll talk about this in a second, but they had this table where they had all these extra books, whether it was because they were left over from the bag or other people wanted to, you know, leave their books on the table because they were writing themselves or some of the publishers left books there as well. And so you could swap your book in and out. So if you had one you didn't want, you could bring that one you didn't want and then take one of the other ones from the table. And so the only reason I kept these ones was because I was thinking I would give them to my dad later. Because <laughs> this looks like something he would enjoy. The Devil's Half Mile. And then this one also kind of screamed my dad to me. I don't know why. I just saw it. And I was like, he might like this one. Um, Crimson Lake. I also thought the cover was kind of cool with the reflective. Um, but yeah, I was kind of considering post, like post, you know, putting these back and swapping them out. But I just kind of kept them thinking, okay. Maybe I can add these to his TV read list because I know he's always looking for books and he loves James Patterson. And when I saw it was recommended by James Patterson, I kind of just, I had to think of him, put it aside. And then again, <laughs> it was almost as if they gave me all of the thrillers when I checked in and then the rest of the event, all Coast Mysteries. So they... <laughs> The event sounds amazing. It was. I have to admit, this is probably one of the best events I've gone to. And I've gone to a lot of events over the last couple of years. I just had the best time and everyone was so sweet and engaging and everyone was just really, um, there was just a very positive environment. And it was also smaller. Uh, some of the events I've gone to have been really, really large. And you kind of feel as if you get lost in the shuffle or it's almost, <laughs> you would think with more people, you would have the chance to talk to more people. But the smaller the event, I find it's easier to mingle. That's just me, my, my personal, how my experiences have gone. But it was a smaller event, so I thought it was a lot easier to engage with people, and it was a lot more comfortable in that way. So I really had the best time at Malice, which is why I was so excited going, you know, I don't have time to film and edit, but I really want to show everybody these books because these authors are so great. And that's why I wanted to showcase everything because it just was, it was a great time. So even though I'm not sure I'm going to read some of these books, I'm going, I got them at Malice, so, you know, there's a positive con you know, connotation to them. So, like, yes, Murder by Matchlight doesn't necessarily look like my go-to read, but I got it at Malice, so I'm keeping it. <laughs> I'm curious if anyone else has been to a mystery event or if they're ones that you've heard of or you want to go to. Because um, I honestly hadn't heard of Malice Domestic um, before probably in the last year or so. It was a, it's been going on for a while, but it was kind of a new event that I had never heard of before. And so I feel as if that happens some of the time where... These things are going on, but you just don't know about them. <laughs> I don't know if that happens with anybody else. You're going, oh, yeah, I didn't know this was an event, and I wish I could have gone to it. So this was one of those events where if I had known this was going on the whole time, I would have liked to have been going every single year leading up to this one. And then I know it's happening again next year. It's one of those, you know, now it's like you kind of want to mark the calendar for it in a way because it was one of those type of events where you just want to keep coming back. And then <laughs> as I'm, like, holding this book, I this is what happened. Again, this one looks darker. There's just something about this cover where I'm going, okay, if I want to get scared or, you know, if I know that I'm not going to turn off the lights, this might be my book. <laughs> um, you're too shy to attend any events. See, that's the thing. I'm not really that outgoing either, but <laughs> I've been able to make it work. Um, I think that's why I think, I think the smaller events have been better for me because everyone it's kind of easier to approach people. And then the crowd's a little bit more manageable to maneuver as well. So when you're at the Agatha Awards, yes, it's a big room with the tables and everything else, but you don't feel as if you're lost in the shuffle. Whereas, um, I'm not gonna throw this one on the bus, but there was a another large event that I went to where I was kind of going, you know, I didn't recognize any faces because I would, I mean, at smaller events, you tend to see people and then run into them again. Cause again, there are only so many places to go and so many events going on. But with the bigger ones, you don't really see the same people too often. And so that's why I think I got along a little bit like, better with the smaller ones, because once you kind of have your friends in the mix or you see some familiar faces, there's a little bit of a comfort to that. So if they're ever going to an event, let me know. I'll be your friendly face. <laughs> I'd love to hang out with Jess in real life. I wish that, you know, 
it was it's one of those you're my online friend you know you need to be in real life too <laughs> very true i'm kind of curious i think um I think KissCon was also a very small romance event. Um, that was probably one of my favorite romance events that I've been, that I've attended. Again, I think the smaller events are just a lot more fun because you can talk more to other fans and talk with the authors one on one. And so, I think smaller events are probably more the way to go. As I'm getting ready to go to RWA next month, which is going to have three thousand people or something. I mean, it's I think it's one to three thousand or something. There's a lot of people attending, and it's in New York, which is also you know, prime location. So as I'm talking about the small ones, I'm planning to go to a big one. And that was also a great time. So just across the board. <laughs> yes, we see just now we need to go to events together. I know Nora Roberts is doing her own book signing. Um, and I want to say like a month or two. So I'm gonna have to keep you in mind for that one. I prefer a smaller event to shorter lines. Yes. That's the other thing about these events. I was so happy with Mouse Domestic because I was never in one line too long at these book events, which is why I also think I made out like a bandit getting all these free books. The, you know, the more tables there are, the fewer the, you know, if, you gotta be able to go from the line to line to line. Cause if you're in one line for an hour, I don't know if you guys have been to a lot of signings, but some of them only last about an hour, hour and a half. But if you're in the same line for this big name author for half an hour, you're not going to have that much time left to go get other books. That's that's just how it's going to be. So if the line's shorter, you can go get more books. <laughs> There's a strategy. Yes, RWA is a very large one, but I had a great time last year, which is why I'm so excited about next, you know, the next event next month. It's coming up. I've been looking forward to this for ages. <laughs> I think after the last RWA, I was already looking at my calendar going, when's the 2019 one? Now I'm looking like, when's 2021? So <laughs> yes, RWA is one of those ones where I think you'll have fun. And again, free books, free romance novels in their arcs. And then all your romance authors are there. I mean, I met Meg Cabot, who's my romance writing idol. I love her. I pretty much was fangirling on her when I met her. So <laughs> um, you do need a strategy when it comes to these book signings, which is why I think the more I've gone to, the better I've gotten at it and the more comfortable I've become. So that's the other thing, too. I, I know the first couple of events I went to, they were a little bit more difficult. And then it was nice when I knew somebody or I had a friend in line with me. I think when I was at a larger event, having someone with me was also a factor. When I went to a polycon, I was there with a really good friend of mine, and so we were able to maneuver and hang out together, which was great. Um, at RWA the very first time, I, I met up with another girl who I knew, and I don't know if she wants me to talk about her name or not, but I, I hung out with her the first couple of signings, and it was so great, especially because she's much more of an outgoing human being than I am. <laughs> she, you know, she's one of those people who can just talk to anybody, whereas I kind of just you know, wait my turn to talk and I'm a little bit more introverted. So she was the perfect person to go to the event with. So I think also like who you go to, like who you hang out with is also a big strategy factor and can make the event a lot more fun too. And then Alfred Hitchcock, you just have to have Alfred Hitchcock mentioned if you go to a mystery event, it just needs to be a thing. And then I also hadn't heard of this one, the Ellery Queen uh, mystery magazine, but now I really want to subscribe. <laughs> Sometimes you find out things you're going, how did I not know about this? And that was kind of one of those moments. Again, I almost got rid of this book on the uh, switch it in and out table, but it was, <laughs> this is going to sound so bad and I don't mean anything badly about this book, but I think a lot of people at the event are cozy mystery readers and this one is not a cozy mystery and people were swapping this one in and out at the swap table for books. And I felt so badly, <laughs> I was going, okay, I'm gonna keep mine, I'm gonna read it and then hopefully do a review or something because I felt so badly other people were leaving it at the table. I'm going, okay, other people were leaving the book, I'm gonna keep mine just because I felt badly. I was like, no, 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 this is, this is now my book. I'm taking ownership of it. And I also love art. I mean, I loved art history when I was an undergrad. I took a couple art history classes, so. <laughs> Yikes, Hitchcock, yes. <laughs> Rear Window is one of those those classics that's just it's timeless. And then I did, I will admit, I did swap two other books because the other ones I thought looked like my dad, so I kept those for him. But there were a couple books I'm going, this isn't for me or for him, and I wasn't going <laughs> to pawn them off on someone if I didn't really, if I'm not invested in a book or I'm not really sure about the premise, I'm not going to be going to someone, oh, here, here's this book. So I swapped two books out for two cozy mysteries, and I was very happy with my choices. I 
again, cozy mysteries. As soon as you see a cozy mystery over on the table, I kind of want to go swap it and get it. So no good. I love this pun. No good tea goes unpunished. I love that. And I also think the cover is just adorable. There's just something so cute about it and also menacing at the same time. <laughs> it looks like it's poison. You got the cup there. Then you have the wedding cake and the knife is on the top with it. What is that? That looks just... You're also missing the groom. I don't know if he's the one who gets murdered or not, but there's only a bride on this cake. So this book cover alone has me intrigued. Just saying. <laughs> oh, hi, Melanie. You're so sweet for stopping by and saying hi. Oh, I know you just... I know. Thank you for joining our Cozy Mystery Book Club a couple um, last month or a month or two ago. So I'm so happy to see you joining. You're so sweet to stop by. <laughs> Uh, yes. Um, I love sharing both. Yeah. If, it's one of those things where if I like the premise of a book and it sounds good or I know it's of interest to somebody, I will keep it. But there were just two books that didn't seem to go with anything I knew or any of my friends or anything. So I was going, I might as well swap it in for books that I know I will read and will enjoy. <laughs> um, you almost bought this one? See, if you do buy it, we're going to have to do a buddy read. Because I just saw this and I was going, why is this on the swap table? Who is giving this book up? This is now mine. And it was also the only one there on the swap table. So whoever left this, I, I got it right away. There was not a second copy there. <laughs> hey, hi, Chelsea. You're so sweet to stop by. Oh, welcome. <laughs> You're so sweet to subscribe. Um, I was going to mention this later, but I know you guys are watching now, so I might as well just, um, while it's on my mind, as a way to say thank you for tuning in live, you know, Make sure you DM me because I do have some swag from the event. I still have some bookmarks that talk about um, Chai Another Day, Leslie Budowitz. I still have some of her bookmarks. And then I also still have a couple of these Kensington um, pads left over from the event. So they have the Cozy Mystery book covers on the back and then some notes in the middle. So if you guys are watching right now, make sure you DM me because I will send you some bookmarks and the pad and stuff. And then I have some other swag <laughs> as well. So if you guys want some of that stuff, just please DM me either on Instagram or Twitter or something. Um, please. Um, <laughs> you love that cover and sorry misspelled. You misspelled what? <laughs> oh, almost bu um, bought. That's fine. I, Me and autocorrect, it's a thing. I am not going to judge anybody for misspelling because honestly, yeah. <laughs> I've had some really fun typos. Uh, my new book, did you see my pictures on Twitter of my new book corner and haul? No, I didn't. If you guys ever um, message me on Twitter or Instagram and I don't see it, um, please just message me again because I try and respond and like comments and everything else. Um, <laughs> again, this is one of those things where it's like, it's not a bad thing. It's one of those that can make things difficult. Goodreads retweeted, um, I had a picture of Rebecca with the opening line from the book and they retweeted me. And so Whenever someone retweeted the, their, the picture on their account, I think there was something like 100 retweets and 400 likes or something. And so every time someone liked or retweeted, I got a notification. And so my notifications were just pushed all the way down. And so I'm pretty sure the last week or so I've been missing some stuff. So if you guys haven't heard back from me about something, please just send me the message again because <laughs> I just kind of, um, yeah, the, the, my, 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 my notification feed kind of got very, very busy, very, very quickly. And so I was really, really excited that Goodreads retweeted me and I was you know, smiling from ear to ear. I was looking down at my dog, Max, going, look, this happened, even though he has no idea what I'm talking about. And so <laughs> I ended up, I think I missed some tags along the way, but if you guys ever don't hear from me, please just message me again. I promise. <laughs> I always try and get back to people. So if you don't hear from me, please just message me again. Um, yeah, <laughs> Twitter can get a little crazy, especially if there's like follow Friday and people keep replying um, all and stuff. Or if you get tagged in a thing, sometimes everyone hits reply all and then other, you know, people tagged, you get the same messages. So my Twitter notifications can get pretty hectic. So if I ever don't respond, please just message me again or DM me or something. So please let me know what your, what your book haul was because I would like to see it. <laughs> so good luck. I mean, congratulations on creating that too. That's awesome. Now I need to go find out more about this. <laughs> if it's Cozy Mysteries and Romance, I am in. <laughs> um yay thank you yes goodreads it's so funny because they do retweet me every so often and it always just i always get so excited like it's the first time because i never expect it so every time it happens it's like it's the first time i'm going oh my goodness goodreads because i'm such a i'm such a fan so whenever you use the hashtag and it gets goodreads with a view they look at your tweets and stuff and so 
whenever they do that, I just it makes me so happy. It makes my day. The little things from Bookstagram life. <laughs> if you're a Bookstagrammer, you understand. It's one of those things where you spend all your time talking about books, taking pictures of books. It's really nice when that love is validated, especially by fellow book lovers. And then I was actually going to buy this book at Barnes & Noble, and I was able to get it for free at the swap table. So leave no scone unturned. Again, I love my baking mysteries. You have the word scone. As soon as I see scones on the cover and the title, this book is coming home with me. That's just the case. Yeah, you see, Lady Gizmo's going to watch Melanie's channel too. So is it a blog or a booktube? When you say book corner, is it a, what, what do you got going on? I'm curious. Get to let me know. <laughs> um, I met, so I had the honor and privilege of talking to Devin Delaney. She was such a sweetheart, and she was just such a, I love talking with her. She's such an angel, so sweet. And she actually gave me this book before one of the signings, so Guilty as Charred. This is her latest book. And so um, I talked to her the day of sign-in. So when I got all of my um, free books that I just showed you, <laughs> I then was talking to her. And so she had her bag as well. And so um, she ended up giving me two, two extra books from her bag. <laughs> So she was going, oh, yeah, you want, you like Cozy Mysteries? Here's some extra books. So she gave me her book, which, again, I, I'm so excited about. I still haven't read it. And I am just, this is this is going to get read because I know I'm going to read it in one sitting because I love her and I just think she's so talented. So that is going to get read instantly. But she was so sweet and she gave me two other books from her bag. She gave me uh, Trouble at the Jam Fest, which is from by Leslie Budowitz, whom you guys know I love, a salt and pepper. And then Hark the... <laughs> I love this. Hark the Herald Angel Slay. What? <laughs> I mean, come on. You got a Christmas mystery Christmas thing going? That is amazing. And I also got to talk with Vicki Delaney. This woman is hysterical and she's so talented. And I just, I love talking to her. I have um, my new, um, I'm going to call it a series. So it's called Classically Cozy Conversations. And so she is one of my Classically Cozy Conversations. And I just had the best time talking with her. I just, all the love and shout out in the world to her. And she signed it to me. I was so happy she signed my book. <laughs> I felt so special. Um, I'm, oh, <laughs> so I'm not personally connected to Acorn TV. I mean, I met some of the people there at Malice Domestic who um, did the showing of, what is it called? Mystery Queens or Queen of Mysteries. And then, um, I myself am a subscriber to Acorn TV. I, I was going to talk about this in a second. So Devin, <laughs> I had been searching for this book. We did this book for um, Cozy Mystery Book Club was it two months ago. And so I had been searching for this. Amazon didn't have the paperback copy, or if they did, it was for $40 or $50. And then I tried finding it at Barnes & Noble, and they were sold out. I was so upset. When Devin opened her bag and I saw this, I just, I got ridiculously excited because I started telling her of how I was looking for the book and how I've been watching the Agatha Raisin TV show. If you guys are not watching Agatha Raisin, you're missing out. That show is amazing. If you like Cozy Mysteries, gotta be watching this. It's on Amazon. <laughs> you can tune in and watch this on Amazon. It is worth watching. And so when I ever, and it says based on the TV show, I was going, I love this show. She's going, this is for you. I was meant to get this book to give to you. So Devin was really great. And she gave me this book. I'm going, I know. And I got Keisha Death and it's from Devin. So it's just, this is just the great book that's going to have to get a place of honor in my library just because I was so excited. <laughs> um, it's just so, I mean, I don't know if it's about networking, but it's so funny when you talk to writers and you get so excited about their work and they're going, oh, you, you like my work? Yeah, I have an extra copy. Here you go. And that's kind of what happened with Devin. I was talking to her and she was just, she is so great. I haven't edited my interview with her yet. And so I'm going to post that again, Classic Closed Conversations. And she was just so great to talk to. And she was going, oh, you have my other books. You read them. And we're talking about her characters. And she goes, well, I have an extra copy. So I was just, I was so ecstatic that I have that book. And the thing is, I put these aside because I knew I wanted to do some sort of book haul with them. And so because it's been in the mix, I haven't read it yet. So it needs to get read. <laughs> um, You've, t you've created a book review blog and other booky info as well. <laughs> I would love to follow, of course, all the bookish love. I mean, you're also a sweetheart. So, of course, whatever you're doing, I'm going to support you. Yes. 
I would. I want another season of Agatha Raisin. There better be another season in the mix. Otherwise, I'm gonna be sad. Because there's all. It's also a very long book series, and the fact that Acorn TV hasn't done the rest of it, I'm kind of curious what's going on with that. <laughs> um. So we have two other piles. So we have the book. All the books that I got at Kensington, <laughs> their book signing, and then books that I bought or were you know purchased on site or brought with me. And then just a couple other books that I'll talk about in a little bit. So we have um, some options in regards to files. So do you want the free books from Kensington? Because there are a lot here. And I was so excited with this Kensington book signing. Y'all who have never gone to a book signing with Kensington, they tend to do free books. So if you go to one of their book signings, they tend to have their authors listed. And then the authors will have their latest book at their table. And so they'll have X amount of copies. And so to give away for free. And it's amazing. <laughs> it's so great. And it was so funny because I'm just going to grab this one as an example. So there was a bookstore on site at Malice Domestic, and this was for sale. But at the same time, they were giving it away at the book sale or the, um, during the book signing. So you didn't actually have to purchase your copy of this one. <laughs> so J.R. Ripley's book, I was able to get this one for free at the book signing versus purchasing it at the bookstore. And I don't know if they knew that, if they knew that he was going to be doing this and they were going to be giving away books for free and having it for sale. I don't know if they caught that or not, but um, I did. I got my book for free. <laughs> and he and I got to meet him, and I'm pretty sure this one is signed to me. Yes, it is. And it says, you know, Malice uh, 2019 in the middle, right there in the middle. So he, he dated it. Hey, welcome. You're not late. You're so sweet to just stop by and say hi. I kind of, my thought process with doing this was that it's going to be archived so that people could stop by any time and you're just so sweet to, to say hi now live. I really appreciate that. They, um, you hope they hold book signings in Florida. Florida has some events. I know there are some romance ones that go on in Florida. I don't know about mystery ones for sure, but I know that there are a few romance ones that are specifically held in Florida on an annual basis. Kensington Publishing has been so generous to you throughout the years. Kensington has been amazing. I love Kensington. I have <laughs> just all the praise for Kensington. I um I was I posted my vlog from Malice earlier, and I was invited to the Media Maven event, and there were two uh, representatives from Kensington there, and they talked to me, and they ended up sending me I think seven books for free. <laughs> They sent me just this big stack of books and I've been in touch with them after the fact. They were so great. And the fact that, you know, I mean, they were so personable and so kind and so generous. And then the event itself was so well organized and well done. I mean, just, I, ha I can't say enough positive things about Kensington. And then I also love their romance department too. I think it's just, you know, Kensington for the win. <laughs> I really love Kensington. So I think they were also the only, uh, free book signing that occurred during Malice, so they also have that in their little back pocket, too. <laughs> hey, friends! See, more people from Florida finding each other. So you guys can go to bookish events together. And then I get to be jealous that you guys live in New Jersey world. <laughs> Which I really want to go to as an adult. Um, I know, I have so many books over here. I'm like, there's so many piles to go through. Again, these are all Kensington books, just all the love to Kensington right now. So we have Forever Fudge, which is one of my new favorite titles for Cozy Mystery. You need to find some around you. Yes, when it comes to, this is the thing, I feel like people need to Google book events because honestly, there were some going on that I didn't know about and they were happening right in my backyard. I live in DC and I didn't know about a polycon. I've lived in DC for five or six years now maybe even seven, <laughs> I've been here a while, and I didn't know Polycon was held uh, every year. I didn't know about that. So the, for the first couple of years I was here, I had no idea that this book event was going on. So I was missing out on all the book love. And it was one of those things, it just never crossed my path for whatever reason, whatever hashtag or accounts I was following, it just never popped up. So I want you guys to go to all your book events. You gotta do this. <laughs> St. Augustine, <laughs> he went the book file. There. <laughs> There's, there's a lot of book files over here. Um, hey, Northern Virginia. I know, I, mean, I live in DC. I got my master's at Georgetown. Now I'm getting my PhD at American. So DC for the win right now. <laughs> but I'm originally from Massachusetts. So if you hear the Bostonian accent, that's why. Um, again, Nancy Coco. Nancy Coco, forever fudge. As soon as you put anything baking related in the title, it's becoming mine, it's mine. And 
for some reason, dogs were not a big thing at this event, but cats were there. Cats, I mean, there was Murder, <laughs> Murder She Meowed, which is one of my, I love this title. And there are so many other cat related ones. Final exam, there's a cat on the cover. There are so many cats. <laughs> one taste too many, another cat on the title, just thread on arrival, another cat on the cover. <laughs> There's just all the cats, just all the cats. And I have my dog. And so that's why I think I held up Forever Fudge first because there's a cat and a dog. <laughs> so I was kind of getting the biggest kick out of finding out how many cats there were in the Cozy Mystery File. But Thread on Arrival. I do know how to knit, so I, I think I got excited when I saw that. I know, I love the cover. And then One Taste Too Many, I kind of get the biggest kick out of how the cat's looking like, you stole my food. I kind of want to know if the person was poisoned or what, but we need to figure this out. <laughs> cool beans. <laughs> you guys are adorable. And then a witch city mystery. I feel as if I'm going to have to do this one for Halloween. We're going to have to do a buddy read or something because honestly, this looks like it's too perfect to not do for Halloween. It's a, it's a witch city mystery and the cover is just it's perfect for Halloween. So come October, we got to be talking about this book. That needs to be a thing. Hey, everyone's connecting. I love it. See, aren't you guys like you guys are meant to connect in the comment section. See, now I wish I knew more about Florida and all the locations because now I'm jealous. And it's also probably not as the weather's probably a little bit nicer down there too. See, yes, I get excited when there are dogs on the cover. And I'm trying to see where it is. I don't think I have the book. I know I posted this on my Instagram. Oh, I know why I don't have it because it wasn't a free book. It was, um, there was a writer there. She had a dog stuffed animal and he had he had sunglasses on because it was a police dog detective. And so that was the first dog that I saw at the event. And I was so pumped because I was going, you don't really see dogs on the cover of Too Many Crazy Mysteries. Because even, you know, this one, it's Murder Shimmy Out. There's no wolf. There's no dog. It's, it's all about cats. And so whenever I see a dog in the cover, I think I instantly just make a mental note about it. Hey, see, I'm so glad you guys are connecting. You really want more needlepoint cozy mysteries. I'm trying to think. There's, I, this isn't needlepoint, but not my sister's keeper. I got this one. Again, I knit. <laughs> I, I, I made blankets. I can knit scarves. I can't make any shirts or any sweaters like that. I would love to be able to make sweaters. Haven't gotten that good yet. I plan to, but needlepointing and, and quilting, at least there's some out there. Yes, you guys, see, maybe you should write that. If you want to be a writer, maybe you should do your own Needlepoint Mysteries. I'd, I'd be fully supporting that one. <laughs> see, I've seen those books. I'm pretty sure I have the first couple downloaded as eBooks, but I don't think I've read them yet. I need to. And it's one of those things where I know I'm going to read it all. <laughs> it's going to be one of those, I'm going to read it all in one sitting. So I need to, I need to have the time put aside to do it. So that's definitely why that hasn't been read yet, but it needs to. Kind of got me thinking where I'm looking for the other ones because I could have sworn there was another quilting related one. Oh, here it is. I found it. Assault and beatery. <laughs> I love the puns. And I also think the cover with this kind of coral color, like I think this coral color is just so pretty. And so this might be a little might be up your alley. I'm trying to make it so it's not shining. So it says assault and beatery. This might also be worth looking into for you because it also has that great little craft table at the corner, you know, get the bees, get everything, the string. I kind of want this to be my office. I don't need it, but I really want it. I really want it. So that might be another fun buddy read type of situation going on. And then I'm trying to see if there's another one here. I don't think so. But definitely, <laughs> the Cody's Mysteries really love their animals, which I also really appreciate. Because again, I'm a dog person. So left for dead. Come on. This is a great pun. <laughs> this made me so happy. And I think I got the biggest kick out of the fact that the thing looks, I don't know if you can see the bunny, but it actually looks scared or surprised. So I don't know who did this to you, but like, I don't know who designed this cover or who did this, but it is just, it is fabulous. And I also, again, with the cover, so I'm trying to angle it so you guys can see. There's a cemetery on the bowl so that you guys can see. It looks, you know, it says rest in peace. I mean, I don't know who designed this cover. Again, it's a Kensington one. 
I love this cover. Right, this needs to be done and posted on Bookstagram ASAP. This is going to be one of my favorite covers that I've come across from Alice or just any Cozy Mr. Books in general. I love it. <laughs> right? There's not too many bunnies. Again, we have more cats. And then this is a very random kind of seagull. <laughs> I don't know what it is about Bert. Like, I don't know what it is. I mean, need to find more dogs and Cozy Mysteries. So this one is Shattered at Sea. So you got the, you got the seagull. I also like that it's something different where it's at sea. You don't really, most of them are small towns. So having something out on, you know, yeah, on sea, I thought that was interesting. I just thought that was kind of different. And then same thing with this one. We're going a little bit, again, we might look into this one for Halloween because we have a ghost. <laughs> you don't get too many supernatural cozies. They're out there, but there aren't too many of them. So Southern Sass and Killer Cravings. This might be, again, one of my favorite covers. I just love this. And you also don't get too many yellow or orange book covers. I don't know what it is about those those colors that publishers don't use, but this is kind of a rarity. And it really does pop on your bookcase when, because you tend to see a lot of the same colors. So when I do my little color coding behind me, it's very easy to find the blues and the blacks. But when it comes to the yellows, it doesn't even take up an entire shelf of my, doesn't even take up a shelf, it takes up maybe a fourth of it. Yellow is just a rare color. <laughs> yes. Shout out to Kensington. I know, right? We should do, we should probably do that. Do a, This might actually be really interesting. You guys just gave me an idea. We should do different bunnieries or different books for different holidays when it comes to Cozy Mysteries. That might be kind of fun. Because we also have the, the Christmas ones I showed you before. So we have some options in the mix. So I like that. An Easter one. We got Halloween. We can do this. <laughs> within romances yes because you also know the tropes you're getting if it's a romance and that's on the cover like it's very upfront about the tropes this one i mean it, again it kind of took me a second to realize like she was a ghost because she's see-through so i feel like the covers need to show you what's going on in the book themselves so if they can show you the trope that's kind of nice i know right i feel as if we should tag kensington and be going hey remember how you did this book signing all these books are amazing they look so cool this is another one of those titles that just, oh my gosh, S'mores Murders. <laughs> S'mores Murders. I mean, come on. I thought that was hysterical, and I really do appreciate the fact that they put the s'mores on the cover. I mean, you couldn't have that be the title and then not put that there. And it makes me kind of hungry and want to go camping, and I don't even like camping. <laughs> I'm not really outdoorsy, but I kind of want to go camping just so I can have s'mores now because of this book. So... Just saying. Because Cozy Mysteries, they make you hungry. Because this was one of the other ones that I got there. And again, murder with collard greens and hot sauce. A lot of cooking cozies. And I mean, the knife on this one kind of freaks me out a little bit because it's really prominent. Whereas on the other one, it was much smaller. But yeah, we got our, we got our cooking cozies. Yes, Mary. Okay, so if you're down for this, we're going to have to figure out a holiday themed Cozy Mystery read along situation so that every holiday we have a cozy to talk about. I think we can do that. I did get this one with a dog on it, but the only reason <laughs> I kind of put this at the bottom is because the dog looks like he's almost going to get hit with the arrow. He looks like he's in danger, which kind of made me sad. <laughs> I was really worried about the dog on this cover. I mean, I was talking to Nancy J. Cohen, and she said, you never kill the dog, you never kill the cat, you never kill any of the animals in a cozy mystery. Otherwise, your reader is going to rebel. And so I know that the dog is probably not going to get hurt, at the same time, it made me nervous. <laughs> I think Cozy Mysteries have some of the best covers because they're just so they're just so colorful and so bright and engaging. They just make you want to smile. I mean, there's just really something about Cozy Mystery covers. I mean, there's also most of them tend to be the mass market paperback type of covers, but then every so often you'll get the trade covers where they're just bigger. And I kind of always pause, going, "Is this a cozy?" Yes. I kind of like the fact that it's a bigger cover too. I love <laughs> you love kale and collard greens. I, it's one of those, I have to admit, I thought it was kind of funny uh, collard greens and it looks like a healthier cozy mystery. Cause again, usually you get the s'mores and the chocolate. Usually you get the, the cake and the pies and everything else. Cause even the, the Southern Sass, the cake on it, they usually all have cakes, but this one looks like it's going a little bit healthier. So I thought that was kind of funny. I don't know if anyone's, you know, gluten-free or something like that, but something's going on there. 
cookbook. It looks like a cookbook. <laughs> it does. There are a few of them that are just really, really cute. Um, these are still all Kensington, as I'm, we were talking about this before. I think I actually, because I put them underneath the piles of what they look like. We have more cats. So we have all the cats, just all, all the kitty related cozy mysteries, all the cats. But this one I think wins. <laughs> Feral attraction. This might be, again, one of my favorite puns. So fatal attraction. Uh, and he's wearing a shower cap. Who thought of putting a cat in a shower cap? I'm sorry, but like, I really want to know. <laughs> Were they at like a book cover design meeting and someone suggested this? If so, I want to know why. It came out adorable, but I really want to know why he's in a shower cap. <laughs> I'm glad I'm entertaining. <laughs> I think it's so funny. I mean, I want to know how he ended up in the shower cap. It's not just the cats on the cover. He's wearing a shower cap on the cover. Because there are other ones here, and the other ones I showed you. I mean, this cat's going after girls. You have the other cats that are doing stuff. This one wants, you know, a donut or something. This one's wearing a shower cap. Just how? How, Kensington? How did this come about? Please tell me. <laughs> I need to know because that's going to, this is just, this is now on my mind. And I'm never going to forget about this book ever. If you guys find out why he's wearing a shower cap, please tell me, please. I just, I need to know. I mean, uh, that's gonna, that's gonna be one of those things where I'm gonna think about it at midnight and going, why is he in a shower cap? <laughs> it's gonna keep me up and we'll lose sleep over it. See this one, per, like the pearls and poison, that one, you know, that looks like a normal cat. The one, and he also looks grumpy, okay? I know I just put this book down, but he also has that look on him like he's the grumpy cat. Like he looks like he's angry about something. So the fact that this one looks, you know, there's that there's a sassy attitude there or is this one's just mildly curious acting like a regular cat going why is there you no know, what's in front of me i'm gonna smell it or is this one has a personality so i have questions i need <laughs> i need you guys to tell me what's going on there <laughs> how did they i don't know how they got this I, they might have been photoshop i just want to know why he looks angry i mean he just he looks like he, he he's he looks like the murderer okay he looks like he's the one who's in charge. He's not the sleuth. He looks like he's the one who's running away from the sleuth. I need to read this book just to find out how this cover came about. That needs to be a thing. Pet grooming. <laughs> um, Photoshop. So I'm currently earning my PhD. And my uh, dissertation is on the romance genre readership. And so I've been going to a lot of events um, on the romance genre. And so... I ended up being Alice Domestic as kind of a counterpoint because, fun fact for you, mostly, again, Cozy Mystery readers are mostly female, and that's the same demographic for the romance readership. And so I was able to kind of do a point of comparison and do the compare and contrast with the demographics and readership for my dissertation. So that's going in my lit review. So that's how I ended up going to this event. So yes and no. Like, technically, yes, I work with books as a career, but not in the way I'm doing. <laughs> You're an English teacher. That's so cool. What grade do you teach? And then things. I see. We need to find out what's going on with this. We need to find out what's going on. I'm also going to have to be posting about this on Instagram a lot. Just because. And then we have, again, we get a cat and we got the, I mean, there's, a, okay. I, the reason I remember this author is she she might be one of my, my new favorite people in the world. Like, I love her. She had a donut necklace and a donut bracelet. And so right away, I saw her before I was at her table. And then when I saw her go to the table with this one there, I'm going, this makes sense. So <laughs> goodbye, Crueler World. And Ginger Bolton, was, she had the, the necklace. I mean, she was okay. ready. It was in, I just thought it was great how she was mimicking her book cover with her jewelry and necklace. I mean, I just thought that was like upping the book signing. And like, that was great. You teach in it. Wow. Go you. You don't work with the public school system. So is it private universities or private schools then? That's impressive. <laughs> right? I was so impressed with her. And then I'm trying to see where the other person, the other book was. But um, there was another author. She, uh, she wasn't this one. It, was, it wasn't... Um, Trying to see where it was. Maybe I don't have this book. I know I, I don't. I don't have this book because 
she was out. She was, she had already gone out, which was very sad, but she had dressed so that she mimicked her book cover. And the reason I held up this one was because she had to do with um, the seaside. So it had to do with the seashore. And so she had a little sales yeah. on. I love it when the authors just do that and they, they try and match their book covers. I just get the biggest kick out of that. And so she matched hers. And so I love that. I just thought it was the best thing in the world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and yeah. See, I think readers appreciate it when the authors take that extra step. There's just something to that. And then I already showed you that dog who I was worried about, <laughs> but botched for murder. I also thought that was kind of a funny, you know, they put the four instead of four. You got to appreciate the puns and what they do. And then I actually got to meet, um, I, I ended up talking to JD Griffo for a while. <laughs> he was so funny. So my phone, I don't think it's nearby. It's recharging. But my, my case, I have a design case that has my name on it. And he took a picture of my phone case going, oh, you know, where'd you do this? How'd you, like, how'd you get this done? So he was just so funny. He saw my phone and how it had my name on it. He's going, you got to tell me how you did this, how you got that. So we ended up just chatting about how you use <laughs> online for probably close to 10, 15 minutes. He was so engaging and he was so personable. I mean, he was also dressed so fashionably. I, I don't know how he... I don't know if he had his laundry. There wasn't a wrinkle or anything because I know people staying in the hotels and stuff are always trying to figure out how to dress nice. And he had, he looked fabulous. He looked so great. And he had, you know, the nice shirt, the, he had the little, what was it, the little pocket square. He, he, he was ready for his book signing. He knew he was going to have his picture taken. He looked ready for it. And so I talked to him for a little while and he was just great. And so that was why I was just like, I want to make sure I talk. About this. <laughs> and I haven't read this yet. But again, we have the cat on the book cover. I was trying to figure out how to show you guys without having it shine because there's the the cat looks like he wants to go murder the birds. So I think we have a subsequent mystery involved with this of what is the cat going to do now? I don't know if have you guys read any of these books or am I just <laughs> I'm really curious because they haven't read most because they put them aside wanting to talk about them and so I just kind of put them in the pile and put them on my table and so I've yet to read most of them so I'm kind of curious if you guys have read any of the ones that I'm showing you if you have any thoughts about them and then I held up this one already and then <laughs> we were talking about dogs so this one we actually do have a dog show death by dog show <laughs> I feel like if this is the hallmark uh, movie mystery waiting to happen I, I can just see this one being a Hallmark movie right off the bat, and I haven't even read the book yet, but I was so excited that there was a dog show. Treehouse, yes. The treehouse looks, I mean, this looks like it's better than some houses. I mean, that is a pretty epic treehouse. Because it also has, I don't know if you guys can see, but it has like a porch. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 this is a pretty well done treehouse. I don't know whose treehouse that is, but they spent some time on that. And so we also have we also have our dogs. We have a broken trophy. So for the dog lovers out there like myself, there is finally a cozy mystery for us in this mix. And then again, so apparently birds are okay. Murder flies the cat. So Jessica Ellicott was probably one of the sweetest people I have ever met in my life. She was just absolutely adorable. And she was she was one of those people where she just gave you she just pulled you into a hug. It was just, she was just so sweet and so engaging. She actually, there, there was a second signing. So I met her at the Kensington one and there was a second signing and she was behind it. All the tables were to each other. And so you were kind of like, the authors had to go behind the tables. I'm trying to kind of explain this. So it kind of looked like a U shape. And so she was near the end, but she was still blocked in. She walked all the way around to come out to give me a hug. <laughs> and I couldn't believe she did that. And then she stayed on the other side to talk to me for a couple minutes. You know, she was on the reader side and it was just so sweet. I was going, it's like, I love you. Like, can I keep you? I just thought that was the sweetest thing for her to do because she got up, she left her little, her little area of signing. I mean, there wasn't any, there weren't too many other people around, but it was just one of those, she still took the time to give me a hug and just talk to me. I just thought that was the sweetest thing. So I needed to give her a shout out because she was one of the sweetest people at the event. And so I just really appreciated that. Because again, I mentioned before, I'm not that <laughs> outgoing. And so when someone takes the time to be like that, I just, you know, it makes all the difference to me. Yeah, the authors are great. I see that was why I did video mostly. Like, I mean, 
it's like I got to talk about the books, which is amazing. But the people who were creating these stories were so great. And it was so great to meet them. And I just wanted to give them all the shout outs in the world. It was just, I mean, again, J.D. Griffo, I mean, he taught, he's, he took time to talk to me and I appreciated that. <laughs> so I wanted to take some time to give them shout outs because they deserve it. I know, that's the thing too. Romance is literally my life. And so it's really fun when I get to talk about cozy mysteries or go to go do something different because I read, <laughs> I read romance and talk about romance. I guess my job kind of is for my dissertation. And so I feel like cozy mysteries are my fun little side hobby. So I get the biggest kick talking about them. And so I'm not new to this new to the subgenre, but it's definitely something where I wish I spent more time because <laughs> it's a lot of fun and it's so bright and colorful and you always know that justice is going to be served. It's just, it's a great little, it's a great subgenre. Yeah. <laughs> See, we got to really do something because it's so nice that people are learning about this subgenre. It makes me so happy that Mary and Chelsea, you guys are hanging out with me. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. I wanted, I wanted to curl my hair originally, but I, had, I took a shower about an hour before I went live. Now it's been two hours, but uh, my hair was all wet. I'm going, how can I make the hair look nice, even though I don't have time to do anything with it? So I appreciate the fact you think it looks cute. <laughs> no, it can make me blush. I'm wearing the foundation, so you probably can't tell, but I'm blushing. See, we got to do something. If we guys, if we're new to this, if you're new to the genre and I haven't read these books, we're going to have to figure out something else to happen. We, we got to do that. I'm like, all these books that I'm showing you, you got to tell me if you're interested in any of them because we'll have to work something out. We can do some hashtag buddy reads or something. We can make this work. <laughs> yeah, and we have more cats. <laughs> we need to actually go on the hunt for some dog-related cozy mysteries. We need, This needs to be a thing now. If you ever find a dog cozy mystery and enjoy it, or you just see a dog-related cozy mystery, just because they're so rare, you got to tell me because now I'm curious. <laughs> but we have J.B. Gardner. we got... Um, the Royal Knit Shop before you're talking about beading. So this one might also be up your alley before we're talking about that. So a Royal Knit Shop, Murder at Royal Court. And it's a Cleo Mac mystery. So this might be with your in line before. So I wish I had grabbed this one to show you originally, but it was at the bottom of this giant, giant pile of books. <laughs> so I, I just want to make sure I do shout out that it might be in line with your um, knitting and beading elements before. But yeah, this one might be and I wish I had pulled this out sooner, so I apologize. So <laughs> I do have, I'm looking over at the piles, and then before we get into the other ones, um, I did somehow, I don't know how this happened, but I, I got this at the Kensington signing, and so I have two of the same books. <laughs> and so I was gonna offer to you in live or posted a comment on this video after the fact was that you can get your own copy of Knit One, Die Two. So I have a copy for myself. I haven't read it yet, so I can't tell you if it's I mean, you know, five star. The cover alone is amazing. I know we're talking about cats being plentiful in this genre, and there are so many on this cover. I just get the biggest kick out of that. There's something about this cover that just made me. And then there you get it's just so cute. So I have two copies of this. So one of them is gonna be up for grabs. So for everyone tuning in right now and posting comments, you guys are automatically entered. And then um, after the fact, we're going to leave it open for probably a week or two, just because I know it's hard when people with videos that are archived or longer. So I'll leave it open for a little while, and then people can post additional comments um, on the video for entries later. Again, you can as many times as you want. Um, so this one will be up for grabs, because <laughs> I just love you guys. I'm, just, I'm so happy to just, you know, I get to talk about Christmas with you guys. And so I love being able to be like, yes, I have you. And I know people who are actually interested in getting it. So. I just want to make sure I told you guys that I'm going to be doing this as well as a thank you for watching and tuning in. So um, as long as you as long as you comment, I'm going to go through wrath of fact. We really automatically entered. So I'll keep you posted on who wins the extra copy of Knit One Die Two. And then if you guys want to read it, we can always do a buddy read or something. So just want to mention that. Oh, awesome! Yeah, please uh, message me if you guys want some of the um, additional swag that I grabbed. So again, I have some bookmarks, and then the Kensington girls who I met that were so great. They gave me some extra pads to give out because they have all the Kensington uh, Christmas Street book covers on them, and then it's just a blank piece of paper. So, I just blank paper inside. So yeah, the you know the Christmas Street cover pad. I just think that's so great. So yeah, if you guys want, um, I have three left. So 
you know, one of them's now been accounted for. So now I have two left. So if you want one of the other pads, uh, please message me on either or Twitter and I'll put that aside for you. <laughs> I know, right? You have, and there's also teacups on the cover. So again, if you guys look, comment, comment on anything. <laughs> comment on why you like cozies, comment on wanting to go to other events or anything else because I want, to, whoever, I want this book to find a home. So hopefully, hopefully someone will be winning that in the next week or so. And then one of the other, I think this is the last free book I have. So the, I was so excited with Malice Domestic doing this. They do the Agatha Awards and then you get to request or put in your top few favorite authors at the event and they'll put you at their table. <laughs> and my number one choice was Nancy J. Cohen and I'm table for the Agatha Awards. And so every author who had their table um, gave gifts or gave something, a free book or something to the people at their table. And so I got her latest book and I thought that was amazing because I love her and I love her books. And so I feel as if I should probably talk about her books more than I do. <laughs> when people always talk about cozy mysteries, I feel as if my go-tos are always Aurora Tea Garden and then the Murder um, series by Joanna Fluke. But Nancy J. Cohen is right up there. She's got some She's got some fabulous cozy mysteries, so I was really, really excited that I got her latest one. And it looks so, I look, there's something about her. I mean, it doesn't necessarily look like some of the other cozies in regards to um, just the setup, but it's still so colorful. And all the colors are in her hair. <laughs> I just find that so entertaining. Person. And I don't know why. I just find it hysterical. And then, again, she's just such a talented writer, so the bad hair day mysteries, I'm there for it. I wish I had actually read this already, because now, now I'm going to be thinking about that all night. <laughs> I'm be wishing that I read this book. And so, again, I have some other books over here, and I might as well tell you guys it's coming up on my channel, because you guys are so sweet to watch this video. I will be doing some future giveaways. So, um, Mary Lee Ashford is a phenomenal human being. She's just so sweet. Um, I We follow each other on Twitter, and I think on Instagram as well. So, Again, when it comes to these covers and the title, Game of Scones, I mean, come on. Can't get much better than that. I love Scones, except for that ending. Talk about that on another live stream. But this I, this came out before before the ending, so she was ahead. So even, you know, bitter taste, I'm going to let that go. But, um, yeah, so I brought these two books with me um, to the event, so I have an extra copy that's signed, and I'll be doing a giveaway later on because I love her and I love her books, and so I wanted to do something to just feature her. So I haven't figured out if I'm going to do this on Instagram yet. So if you guys have any suggestions or preferences, please let me know. <laughs> I want to do what's best for you because I want to share, you know, I want to share the Mary Lee Ashford love. So whatever way is going to spread the list, just that's what I'll do. So if you have any preferences, please let me know. But yeah, game of scones. <laughs> there's so many books here there's so many things to check out and so I was gonna this is the first one in the series so the bad hair day mysteries this is the first one and I have all of her books as ebooks for the most part or I have the entire series as ebooks and so when I knew Nancy J. Cohen was going to be at the event I specifically purchased the physical copy of this book because I wanted her to sign it because I've read it probably 10 times and I think so I should probably talk about this book more than I do. We should probably do something to just talk about this series. This should be done more. So Killer Knots is the first one in that series. So if you're interested in just a hairdresser, those mysteries, this is for you. Because her lead character is also hysterical. And she has some really fun best friends. And Nancy J. Cohen is also kind of the queen of those mysteries. <laughs> she, where is it? She literally wrote the book on cozy mysteries. <laughs> She was nominated for Agatha Award. She should have won the Agatha Award, as far as I'm concerned. She wrote this book on how to write cozy mysteries, and it was not a thing. Um, again, it's an honor to be nominated, but I was really rooting for her because this book is phenomenal. So if you're interested in writing cozy mysteries, this is also something you should consider looking into. And, you know, surprise, I, <laughs> I was prepared. So my classically cozy conversations, she's one of them. <laughs> I got to chat with Nancy J. Cohen and fangirl, and I really, really fangirled. It was, it was, it made me so happy. I was very, very, that made my day, the entire event, mic drop, it was done. And so after that um, interview airs, um, the other book is signed, and so I'll be doing a giveaway of that at some later date. So 
I have, I updated um, my calendar on my personal website. It's just my name, AngelaMariaHart.com. And so all my future videos for the next month and a half or two months are like scheduled and posted. So you can see when this is going to air and when you should keep an eye out for the giveaway to be posted. So this is coming soon. Just want to mention that because you guys are so awesome to be hanging out. <laughs> you guys are getting all the behind the scenes info of things I was kind of teasing about before my Instagram stories. Or I'm just telling you guys flat out what's going on. So if you have any um, kind of preferences for giveaways, let me know. Again, I want to do what's best for everybody. So whether it be Rafflecopter or Instagram or Twitter or just a combination of everything, just please let me know. I want to do what's best for everybody. Because again, <laughs> another giveaway that I was going to do with another classically cozy conversation was Leslie Budowitz. This one's my copy. I just put my little post it there because she signed that one to me. But we have another signed copy. It's Crooks and Counselors. So this is going to be up for grabs after her interview airs. So again, if you have preferences or recommendations or something when it comes to giveaways, let me know because <laughs> there are a lot of them coming your way. And I love these authors and they were so great. So I really want to make sure I do a good job when it comes to talking about their books and giving people the opportunity to get their copy. So if you have any preferences, let me know. <laughs> you think you may have one of her books. Nancy J. Cohen? So this is the other one. I'm pretty sure this is the second one in the series. I might be getting them confused because I've read them all so many times. <laughs> so she has, again, some really fun covers, Perm to Death. This is another great one. Again, I knew I was going to be talking to her, and I was going to be seeing her at the event. I was so excited to be with her. I got to do the interview with her. I got to sit at her table during the Agatha Awards. So I was able to get this signed, too. So my little inner fangirl is happy. <laughs> so I specifically brought that book with me to get it signed because I knew. And then the other books that I brought with me, knowing I wanted the signatures. So we read this one for the Cozy Mystery Book Club, A Murder for the Books. So Victoria Gilbert right here. And I, she is the very first Classically Cozy Conversation that is going live on my channel this Friday at, I believe it's 11 a.m. EST. I scheduled it. <laughs> so it should be going live. And I have some um, prints that she signed that are gonna be up for grabs for giveaways that I'll just mail out. And then she offered herself to throw in um, a book. So she's gonna be providing a book, so, which is amazing. <laughs> so you guys can get your own signed copy of A Murder for the Books um, when that airs. So keep that in mind. A lot of things are for grabs tonight. I'm telling you guys what's going on. You guys are really getting the download right now. Yeah, I brought this one with me. Um, you guys know we had already done this book with Mr. Book Club, so I already owned it. But I wanted to make sure I got it signed because this book was amazing and it was a five-star read and she was great to talk to. <laughs> that is an amazing little emoji with the sunglasses. That makes me very, very happy. So I have mentioned this before, but I got to attend a Maven uh, event and <laughs> it was, I have to admit, I thought it was really well organized and well done. And what they did was if you were a person in the media, and I think that is so funny and so <laughs> I'm really kind of flustered that I get to be considered part of the media. Uh, you get an author assigned to you, so you have a buddy for the event, and Essie Lang slash Linda Watkin was mine. And when she came to me, I'm going, I need to read her books. And so I purchased her books, I loved them, and I had to bring them with me to get them signed. So she was my author for the event, and I was so glad that she was assigned to me because she was just so sweet and so talented writer. So she's one of those people who's beautiful inside and out. <laughs> Yes, there are a lot of giveaways coming your way, so mark your calendars, be on the lookout. Um, I feel weird saying like Instagram and Twitter, but yes, I'll be posting more info on Instagram and Twitter for reminders and with the links and stuff. So make sure you you know you do follow me there if you want more information on it, or if you have any personal questions, please DM me know that way too, because um, I want to make sure I do this you know the right way. You guys have plenty of chances to enter and be up to date with stuff, so I'll try and give you as much notice information as I possibly can. <laughs> yes, Victoria Gilbert, she was she was so great. I really love meeting her. And <laughs> there's a reason why she's my first classically cozy conversation. Because we did the book. She was, you know, I, I messaged her and I didn't want to message I, I I had to work on my courage to message her and be going, Do you have some time? I'd love to talk to you. And she responded right away. She was so great. She invited me to a couple different things. She was going, Oh, I'm doing a panel at this time. You know, I'd love to see you there. Oh, I'm doing this signing at this time. I mean, she kept me up to date with stuff. So I mean, she was great. And so it's such an honor to be able to say, like, I did meet with her. 
I see again, I smile just talking about it. I, I was, it was definitely one of those fangirl moments where I'm trying to be cool, be cool, you know, keep it calm. So <laughs> I was glad now, I'm doing the live stream here, but I was probably glad that I could edit that video because I'm going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I was really excited. <laughs> and another person I definitely fangirled over was Cynthia Khan. So I love her books. I feel as if I should probably talk about them more than I do because I really do enjoy her books. And it might be the fact that it has to do with academia because again, I'm earning my PhD. And so her books are set in the university life. And so it's, a, I was going to say, I didn't want to you know, mess this up. Um, Alila McLean, Alila McLean, oh my gosh, I'm tongue tied. Alila McLean, Academic Mystery. And so these are so much fun. I love them. And she was so phenomenal. I, I didn't know, I'll, I'll, I'm going to hold this book up now to you. So I didn't know she had a story in, in this anthology, this collection. And so they did a book signing specifically for this. So all the authors on the back were at the signing. And so you were, you can get your paper copy or hard copy or something of the book. And then you can go meet the authors and get it signed. Well, I didn't know she had a story in this one. So the media maven event was at 10 o'clock. So I was tired. It was, it was a thing. You know, I had to get my second wind, but there was the book signing going on um, beforehand at nine. And so I knew that was happening and I wanted to go get my copy. So I go downstairs, buy the book, and then all of a sudden I see her sitting there signing. And I, <laughs> I, I, I grab my book, I walk right upstairs to my room, I grab the book, bring it right back down, get in line. <laughs> I didn't know she was there. And so I'd been walking around with this book all day and then I knew I was going to the event and I thought, oh, let me just bring my clutch bag or something. So I had my little purse and nope, she was down there signing out this down in my room. So I had to run back up to my room, grab this and then go back downstairs because she was signing. <laughs> there are a lot of subgenres of cozy mysteries. There's a lot. Um, I'm trying to think where it is in my my place here there. I just got um, a cozy mystery workbook on how to outline your cozy mystery and it has the subgenres listed and explain how you try and fit your book into a subgenre. So I might try and uh, post that link later on, but there's a lot of subgenres and I love the different tropes that they use. Yeah, I really love her cover. and what they do, which I think is kind of nice to give it um, consistency is they use the same kind of dark images, but the background is what changes. So they'll do, they'll tweak it, but it's very similar in regards to how it's set up this way. So this is consistent throughout, but the background is what changes. So it's really nice to be able to see that in regards to the cover, so you know exactly <laughs> what's going on. And so they also do different. I think the last one was purple. So I think she has purple, blue, and green, and then the pink one for the first one in the series. So. They definitely do a good job with her books. And she's phenomenal. I loved talking to her. She, you know, she was one of those people where she she kind of made the event in a way. She was so personable and she took probably a solid half an hour to talk to me one-on-one -on -one because I'm earning my PhD and this is a PhD series. So we were just chatting about life and it was just so great. And I'm always gonna remember that. So just, you know, all the shout out and love to her. Just wanted to mention her because Cynthia was great. Yes, there aren't that many. <laughs> I feel as if I'm letting the cat out of the bag. One of the things that I had been working on is I did a mystery uh, writer's digest class, I wanna say just ago, <laughs> and I had been doing this kind of draft of a story, and then I realized, oh, why am I doing this story? Why don't I do an academic cozy mystery series? And that's actually how I wrote a book series, because I wanted to write an academic cozy mystery series, and she was doing that. So that's actually how I found her but I ended up trying to write my own in that way. So we need to find some more university cozies because I was working out, I haven't finished it as of yet. So that's also on the to be written, to be done list. <laughs> you took a mystery course in college. I would have loved to have done that. I took history of cash class in college, not the same thing. <laughs> my undergrad, I did a history of espionage and I thought that was cool. I would have loved to have done a mystery course. That would have been so much fun. I did a Jane Austen course though. Again, if you guys know me, you know Jane Austen's kind of, I love her. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a Jane Knight to my core. Yeah, the authors were so great. I literally, I think my nice things to say about them. I can imagine. That would be one of those classes where I can kind of see people trying to fight to get a seat for it because it's so different.
I mean, I have to admit, I, I, it's one of the, they do the wait list and stuff. I would be going, I want to get in this class. I want to get in this class. Was it an undergrad class? I mean, I'm really curious. I would love to know more about that. I remember they did a science fiction or women's science fiction class or a science fiction class um, with female authors at one point for my master's, but it conflicted with one of my core classes and I was so upset. I was devastated. Ooh, one of your clients uses her psychology degree in all of her novels. She has a murder thriller series, but her more recent novels are women's fiction. Some very impressive, like, impressive clients. <laughs> Again, if you guys are writers, she, she is a great person for you to get in touch with. See, I wish my under, I wish my undergrad university had us. That would have been one of my, I would have made that an elective. I would have found a way to make that an elective. <laughs> It sounds amazing. Jack, I don't think I've read Jacqueline Simon Gunn. See, now I gotta go add her to my Goodreads to be read list. We gotta, we gotta update that. Cause now I wanna know everything. I need to go add everything she's ever written now. If she's your client too, I also wanna support you. <laughs> I really wanna know what's going on with that now. See, I wanna do, see, I think that's the, the fun part though. When people are, they always say right though. And I kind of love that she's using that. And that's what, you know, Cynthia over here did. That's what I was trying to do. So I kind of like that. She's using the writing advice. See, this she's probably a good writer then because, you know, she has her details on point. Well, that was the other thing, wherever the book ended up because they've been moving stuff around. But Victoria Gilbert, you know, she, she was a librarian. That's why her librarian <laughs> is so well done. She's able to really draw in her own personal life. So I like to do that. I think I, I appreciate that as a reader because the details are always so much better. You can tell when someone's really been to a place versus just done like a Google Maps. <laughs> you can tell. You went to community college for undergrad. I mean, I don't know if that would make a difference. I still think that's a great class. <laughs> I don't I mean, I don't think it would matter if it was a university or community college. That sounds like an amazing course. I would have loved to have done it anywhere. <laughs> credit, not for credit. I would have done that in a second. I would have signed up for that in a heartbeat. So there's also, again, I feel as if I'm, I'm dishing all the future giveaway stuff going on. So one of the other people I spoke with was Ellen Byron. She actually won the Agatha Award the day after. So the morning I interviewed her, she won the Agatha Award that evening. And it was so funny because she mentions in the interview, oh, I'm nominated for an Agatha. And I ended with a little asterisk of, she won. <laughs> but I have an extra copy of her book. Um, Plantation Shutters, that's going to be up for grabs after that Classically Cozy conversation airs. So that is going to be happening as well. So I brought those with me because I want I knew I was working with her and I wanted to make sure I got those signed. See, yeah, that sounds like an amazing class. I would have loved to have taken that. I mean, if it was a community college, I would have wanted to just enroll <laughs> just to do class. That would have been amazing. That sounds so much fun. I mean, they had to have talked about some cozy mysteries, right? And definitely a lot of Agatha Christie, I'm going to guess. She must have been involved. I mean, that would have been great to have an excuse to read Agatha Christie. Be like, no, I'm doing my homework. That's how I felt about Jane Austen. I'm going, no, no, no. I'm technically doing my homework. I'm reading Pride and Prejudice for the 20th time, but, you know, it's okay. I have a reason for it. And then this one was a ghost <laughs> at the event. I, I brought this book with me. I, I was determined to get it signed, and I could not find her until the final day of Domestic. It was the last book signing on that Sunday, I'm pretty sure. So Kath Kathleen Valenti was a ghost at the event. I was so happy I was finally able to just kind of catch her. And so I was really just able to meet her the final day because I had been looking for her the entire time. And so I brought this book with me. It had been, <laughs> this book made it to multiple events before I was finally able to get it signed by her. So this book, does some, you know, if I was wearing one of those tracking with the feet, you know, been like, hey, this, this carried 10,000 steps. One of those. It got, it got some work out in there. You, that would be so cool. Talking about all the genres, all the subgenres. You loved it over your other classes. I mean, that's the thing. I have to admit, some of the classes that I took and loved were not major classes. A lot, I think actually some of the best classes I took were electives. I wish that they allowed you to do more electives. Some core classes... I didn't need to be in. I didn't need to be in a statistics class. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't need to be in statistics for mathematics, like a business stats class. I just didn't. But it was fun being in history of espionage. I would have loved to have taken that class. 
That's amazing. I still, I'm still in awe of that. Now I want to know what community college it was. <laughs> well, I'd be like, hey, DC, maybe you should do this. And then I think Courtney actually has the, um, the first book in this series up for the Cozy Mystery Poll for next month. But yeah, we have a dim sum of all fears. And then we also have Murder Lomain. That, this, honestly, I love this. I love the title. I love the cover. And I got to I got to chat with Vivian Chan for a little bit. She was such a sweet human being. I mean, she was just phenomenal. It's stunning. This was she had, I don't know if she always has it, but she had green dye in her hair. She just looks so fabulous and fashionable. I mean, she looked photoshopped. <laughs> I don't know how she did that, but she photoshopped. Her makeup was perfect. Her hair was perfect. I mean, she was. I mean, I was. I was just blown away, like blown away by her. And then she was just sweet on top of that. So, just all the, just bowed out to her. <laughs> you read the first book in this one. I really love. I mean, I really enjoyed these books, and it was so funny. So, I knew she meant. I specifically ordered um one of the I, I ordered two of her books from amazon because they had the ebooks and so the books got delayed though and so when i had to go to the events we're still going to be arriving and so i actually purchased these on site at the bookstore because the books that i originally purchased were not there yet so timing was everything with this and i loved her books and i adored her but i just knew i needed to get them and have them signed but the only downside was the first book in the series was not on site. So, <laughs> so the first book was all sold out, but I was like in third sign. So I was still happy about that. I, I, you know, it was one of those, like, I'll take it. I still got a meter. I still got the book signed. So it was all good. But I was definitely one of those. I would have loved to have gotten the first book as well. I got that way, which was so devastating to me because I really wanted the first book signed too. <laughs> I know you guys are so cute. I'm like, yeah, if you guys have any questions about these books or the author or anything else, please comment. Um, they're a combination, I'm pretty sure, when it comes to the covers. I mean, she has – her new book cover for the latest one in the series is stunning. It looks like a combination of graphic designs with actual images. And then this one is the final book that I purchased on site, which I already kind of held up. This is the anthology. There were a lot of writers that contributed to this. I was so impressed. I saw Leslie Budowitz was there, and I immediately was going, Leslie, she was the first name that I saw and recognized. I'm going, okay, sometimes. But yeah, I was able to get people, um, they were able to sign like right above their chapters. So I had a few signatures with this one. And Parnell Hall was first. His entries first, aesthetically, <laughs> his anthology. I don't know how that came about, but he was kind of the writer of honor at the Malice Awards, and so his his stories first. He was so funny when I met him. Um, so he was one of those where, <laughs> he, he was just so kind of cute about things. He's like, yeah, of course I'll sign your book. He, he, and he like kind of walked away with it for a second. I was kind of going, where is he going? And then, um, you know, I went, I asked him, like, oh, can I take a picture with you? And he was going, how does this work? Because I held, held up the phone. He's like, my arms are longer. I couldn't figure out how to press the button. It was just so cute. He reminds me of, like, a grandfather or something. Aww. I was like, can you give me my paw? Like, I was, he was just so great. <laughs> Graphic designs. Yeah, I mean, I have to admit, I love the colors for these books. There's something about it to make me smile. And not, I mean, some of, like, this one is a little bit dark. I mean, it has the dark tones over here, but even then it still has the brightness on the cover. So even if there is a little bit of darkness, I feel like they offset it immediately with other colors, which I really, really love. And then you, again, you got the fun little, fun little puns, guilty as cinnamon. It's so great. Though, <laughs> there are a lot of books here, but yeah. So this entire table, yep, right there, all the books. And then the final thing that I did at the event which is something I teased about in my Instagram story. I haven't figured out <laughs> how I'm going to do this yet. So as I kind of like awkwardly grab it. So what I did was on Amazon, I purchased this poster. It's the layout for Sherlock Holmes, his apartment. So you have 221B Baker Street. And so I bought the poster and I asked Cozy Mystery Writers, I asked all the writers that I saw to sign it. So you can hopefully see the signatures. So my goal is to have this framed and put it 
above my bookcase and use it for bookstagram pictures and everything else. I just was so happy that I had this thought process. And the main reason I did this was because I mentioned this in other live streams and stuff was that um, I have a lot of ebooks <laughs> when it comes to Cosmos. Whenever I tend to buy a lot of Cosmos or ebooks more so than anything else. I don't know why. I just end up doing like the auto buy where if I'm really in the mood to read something, I want it, you know, right that second. So I have a lot of ebooks. And so these authors, I have books from them, but not necessarily physical copies. And if you guys have been to book signings, lugging books around is no joke. <laughs> that is a workout. That is that is easy. And so I thought if I had, you know, a poster for people to sign, it would be a lot easier to, you know, be able to get these, you know, signatures carried around. And so it worked out so great. So you can see a lot of the big names signed it. A lot of, I got a lot of signatures. There's easily 30 or 40 signatures here. And so the reason why I'm holding this up, it's not just a brag. It's because my idea, I got, I did a second one. <laughs> So I bought two posters and I was walking around with both of them. So one copy was for myself and then I thought I'd do one as a giveaway. <laughs> and I haven't figured out, again, how I was going to do this giveaway, whether it be done via Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, a combination of everything. But yeah, so some lucky Cozy Mystery fan, a mystery reader, can get their own poster signed from all the authors at Malice. So every single person whose book I held up they all signed this. We have Nancy J. Cohen, we have Parnell Hall, we have Leslie Budowitz, we have all the big name Cozy Mystery people who are at Malice all signed this. So this is probably <laughs> the best giveaway item I could ever create. I was so proud of myself. And it was so funny because I was walking around um, with this. So I put the my, mine on top of the other one. And so I was walking around with this and everyone was like, oh, that's such a great, such a great idea. The authors really liked that because I mentioned the eBooks and they were going, oh, I really love this idea. And then when I said, oh, and I have a second copy here for a giveaway, they were going, can I enter it? <laughs> can I be a part? Can I tell my readers about this? Can I treat this? And so they were really on board with that. And so this seemed to be like the big hit <laughs> when I kind of said, oh, can I get your signature twice? So this was a real big thing. And so there are a lot of a lot of people here and I'm really proud to be able to say like I have a copy for everybody you know tuning in so you guys can enter for this and I wish I had these and I was able to do more because I was so I was so proud that I was able to do this and get this for everybody you know the Cozy Mystery Companion hashtag it's real to me I love it so hopefully I'll figure out a way to give this away some lucky winner can get their own 221B sign Baker Street from Malice 2019 so we can have matching copies <laughs> And a lot of the writers, I was really fascinated by this. I mean, I, I thought it was hysterical in regards to where they signed in the apartment because some, some of the authors were like, oh, where's the kitchen? I want to sign in the kitchen. So th that was funny. But then they all signed exactly in the same place except right. one person. <laughs> they all signed exactly mirror images. So you pretty much have the exact same poster that I have. <laughs> except for one author who signed in just a minor different location. But yeah. I thought it was really, I, I love the map because again, Sherlock Holmes, I'm thinking, I was thinking of classics and so couldn't get more classic than Sherlock Holmes, especially 221B Baker Street. I'm very proud of the way this came out. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to put this up for grabs so that someone can win and share in the Cozy Mystery Love. So that was the ultimate giveaway item. I kind of teased about it on my Instagram story and that was the tease. That's what I was referring to. This poster with all the signatures where I honestly think this is like the best giveaway item I could have ever created. I mean, I really am so proud to be able to offer this to people. So however you guys want this to be run, please let me know because I want to do what's best for everybody. Again, whether it's a combination of Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, just tell me your thoughts because my thank you gift. Again, I don't do this for the numbers. My channel's not monetized. I just really love talking about books with everybody and being able to share this love. So please tell me what you guys would prefer would be best for you because this is for you. This is my thank you. <laughs> so please let me know what is going to be um, best for you and what you prefer and, you know, just how you, how you want to give it, you know, to be run because I want someone to win and I want it to be someone, you know, I want it to be my Christmas mystery companions. I want you guys to win something. So I am, um, I have a lot of giveaways. And so hopefully what I think I was going to do too was that if you win one giveaway, so 
if you win the poster, you know, I would, <laughs> it'd be nice to let somebody else win the, the Leslie Budowitz book. So hopefully I can spread the love around across the code companions. So hopefully if you win one thing, I'll then, you know, hopefully, you know, not to be, not to be a downer, but I want to get as many people to win as possible. So, you know, if you win one thing, I'm, I'll probably do a redraw. You can enter if I see your name pop up twice. You're so lucky with that horseshoe and that four leaf clover, but I'll do as many giveaways for as many people as possible. So hopefully I, <laughs> the Leslie J. Cohen, the Prince book, the Nancy J. Cohen book, the poster, hopefully as many people can win as possible. So hopefully just spread the Christmas mystery love around that way. So that is my big, <laughs> my big, I am just, I'm so proud of this. I mean, I really am. So this is just one of those items where I'm just, I'm so proud and so happy to be able to offer this. So, and if you guys have preferences, please let me know. But I haven't figured out how to do this yet, so this will be coming. So be on the lookout for that announcement via Twitter and Instagram. Oh, I was kind of thinking a combination. Um, again, probably... You guys are so sweet to watch this video. I feel as if you guys get the inside scoop, but I'm just so appreciative of you guys tuning in. I'm probably gonna enter you guys automatically anyway <laughs> for watching this video and commenting. So I haven't figured out how I'm gonna do that yet because I wanna be able to offer to people who might have an Instagram and not a Twitter or you know vice versa or something like that. So I'll try and do it yeah. so across YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. I don't know if that will be with comments with reposting something you know whether i have a bookstagram picture and you repost your own account so if you guys have suggestions references or something please let me know because i want to make what's best for you and i also need to make it manageable so that i can monitor how many entries there are so we're gonna have to figure out something but this is coming your way gleam it's like raffle copter but it's more helpful Okay, because I've been using Rafflecopter. So if it's better than Rafflecopter, I I need to go find out more about this. <laughs> more information ASAP. No, I mean it's my honor. It's my it's my absolute pleasure and privilege to be able to offer this. Because I love I mean, I love talking about books and being able to talk about books who also love books, it's just again, you guys make me so happy. And <laughs> you know, and when I'm at, when I'm studying my dissertation and stuff, I've had a very difficult experience and so being able to talk about books that I love with people who also love the books and in a, in a positive environment it just means the world to me so I'm just it's my complete honor and privilege to be able to share this with everybody so I, I, you know I'm so I'm, I'm glad you think it's sweet but it's also completely you know like I love being able to do this talk about books with everybody so just you know like I think you guys are the sweet ones <laughs> to share this experience with me and so now I'm also gonna have to make a note to go Check out Gleam. So that is also going to be done later tonight. But yeah, so those are all the books. <laughs> and so yeah. there are a lot of giveaways coming your way. Every Friday, um, I posted this on, again, my personal website. It's just my name, AngelaMariaHart.com. But every Friday for the next couple of weeks, a classically cozation is going live. And there are going to be swag and books and stuff up for grabs afterwards and with that. So be on the lookout. I want you guys to be able to enter and win and just, you know, spread the cozy mystery, joy, and love. So be on the lookout for that. <laughs> and so I'm pretty, I'm probably going to lose my voice very, very soon. <laughs> but at 8 o'clock, so in about half an hour, I'll be over on Courtney's YouTube channel, Tosman's Cozy Mystery Book Club Pick, which is right behind me. My chair makes those little squeaky noises as I go to grab the book. So a dark and stormy murder. I have the ebook and paper copy because that's good. So, <laughs> in 30 minutes, I'm gonna be over on Courtney's channel talking about this book. So, I feel like tonight is just all about cozy mysteries and mysteries in general, which it's a pretty good way to spend the night. I'm not gonna be complete. <laughs> so, if you guys have any final questions, comments, thoughts, please let me know now. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to run to Starbucks to get a little caffeine jolt and then talk to you guys in a little bit over on Courtney's channel. So, if you have any final thoughts, please let me know. I would just you guys are the best. I mean, seriously, thank you so much for hanging out with me and commenting and chatting and letting me talk about all these books. I mean, seriously, it was just, I mean, you guys are so sweet to tune in and I'm just so appreciative of you taking the time to be with me and oh, <laughs> oh, you're amazing. Courtney's so great. <laughs> I know, see, I'm out with her in 30 minutes, right? So we'll be, we'll be able to talk about more Cozy Mysteries. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I know. 
Yeah, the family. Yeah, hanging out with the family can be pretty important. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, you guys. I am so appreciative of you, and I'm so glad I get to chat and hang out with and share the love. I mean, you know, I love books, and it's so nice to share that love with other people who love books like I do. So you guys are so great, and thank you so much, and just all the love in the world. I want you guys to have an amazing night, and hopefully I get to talk to you tonight at the Cozy Mystery Book Club. And if not, I want tonight to be a great night for you guys. And, you know, please stay kind and creative, and know that you guys matter so much to me, and I'm so appreciative of you. So I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. <laughs> Bye, everyone.